All right, all right, all right. Let's see. Here we go. We're we're back. We're back. <laughs> I don't know if it's, is it any different. I, I just have to trust you guys. Stream's over. Go home. Um, no, it's not. Not quite. Almost. We got Ciaz coming on still, so we got to get him on there. And uh, TM Dutchie is going to make an appearance. All right, how's it awesome. sound now, guys? Is it different? Is it better? So much better, says the Onion Man. There we go. Yes, uh, finally. So much better. Yay! Stafki says, so much worse, Trollface, of course. Ipkai, it's, <laughs> it's the better mic. All right, much better. Oh, thank goodness. All right, thank you guys for making a loud uh, to-do. You were right. I was wrong. Uh... I did the you test. Like on, I have a test channel, and everything was set up perfectly on the test channel. I just assumed that new Windows. Anyway, oh, let's refresh the prize pool. Let's see if anybody. At, let's see, six forty-four. Look down here. Look down here. It did nothing. All right, nobody no. donated in the last no, in that no, last no, no, period. No. It's the same. <laughs> it's still six forty-four. No extra love during the intermission. What's up? All right. So where were we? Back to the tournament format screen. All right, yes. So, broadcasts, here we go. Um, Festive, if you would be so kind as to read out our list of onboard um, shoutcasters for this event. Yes, all right. We, of course, have you, Ami. We've got Romeo back from back from whatever he's been doing. Glad to see him back. Got all sorts of people coming back for this. Uh, Stormless, Von Kluge, uh, Fitchen Moped. I hope, it's, hope I said that right. Fichten, uh, I think, is German. Fichten. Fichten. Okay. Yeah. Fichten. Got it. Sia's, uh, Tightrope, Mr. Devil's Brigade, and then we got yours truly and my partner, Iceman Joker, my, uh, you know, casting partner. <laughs> no homo. And then we got uh, Rogers. Uh, that's a big one. That's a name we haven't seen in a while. That's Mr. Right. Uh, Rogers himself is back. Rebadged as of yesterday for yeah. O2.org staff. It's exciting. Uh, then we got Love Nest, AE, and Fnatic, who is our uh, German language caster. So, good stuff. Uh, that's a that's a hell of a hell of a casting crew. I mean, with right? that many people, we, we should be able to get all these games casted. That's pretty. That's pretty good choice. It's a sick lineup. I'm very yeah. excited. Um, we need we need more analysts though. As far as real like cutthroat analysts, only Ciaz mm -hmm. and Love Nest. But maybe we can coerce some other top players to come on and do some guest analyst work. It's always nice to hear how, you know, it's nice to pick the brain of the top player and see, you know, like how they talk about strategy, build orders, uh, unit composition, and so forth. So we'll see, maybe we can get some other guest analysts on. All right, so now let's talk about how the uh, tournament is gonna be funded. Contribution goals and rewards. All right, so contribution levels can be purchased via P PayPal and each level is five dollars and ninety-five cents each. That's U.S. dollars, green, green money that you know very well. Festive. <laughs> uh, we use funny colored money, but in, in America, actually, you guys are getting colors on your new money now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, are. we are. Yeah, everything's getting fancy, hologram, multicolor. Anyway, we're this is all virtual via PayPal, so you never have to actually handle anything. So a, le a contribution level is $5.95, and you can buy as many levels as you feel comfortable buying. Um, contributors will receive a badge to represent their contribution level, which will be displayed in many places. Uh, one of the places is under your avatar on the top right, which I can show you mine. I am a patron. There you can see my patron uh, badge that I received. This is, this is kind of funny, because this space since Code2.org launched uh, two years ago, Festive, has just been a blank star and a medallion with the number zero next to them. Because <laughs> we always plan to do something like this, you know, where yeah. you receive badges or levels or whatever. And so this space mm -hmm. was just empty filler space for two years. So now finally, this space has a purpose. So your badge goes there. And then it also goes in some other places like under your avatar, on every single post you make on the forums. So, you know. Uh, like, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like if you if you have a staff badge, it goes under that. If you're a user, it just goes right under that. And then inside the um, contributor badge, it shows how many levels you purchased. So, like, let's see. If I, if I could find one of my posts, I could show you that. But anyway, you'll see it yourselves on the forums. Um, so where were we? Uh, 
Yes. And then also, you will be added to the OCF top contributors list. So let me just click on that now. And let me see who all these crazy... Wow! <laughs> I'm so stoked. Festive. Have you clicked on this page yet? No. no. Click, click on it, man. Click on OCF top contributors. It's also in the main menu at the top left under co2.org. If you go down, you'll see OCF top top contributors. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, does that just update automatically? Yeah. It, yeah. Wow. And what, so when we started streaming, there were four names on this list. And oh, now, yeah. And now there's an entire collection of names, and I am so uh, enthused by this that I am going to go through and read them out, every single one of them. All right. So... For donators, we have Swan VIP. This is a level one donator badge, I believe. So each of these guys purchased one level. And we appreciate every single level purchased. Because the way that this works festive is lots and lots of people giving a little bit of amount and then bam, you got it. I mean, that's the key mm -hmm. idea of crowdfunding, right? Mm -hmm. That's like the, the formula for success. So every single level we appreciate greatly it's the masses of those that will hopefully really fuel this thing into being like an awesome prize fund, an awesome turn. So, level one donator, we got Swan VIP. Thank you, sir. We got Nordkind, who you guys probably know because he did a lot of those artworks that were in my slideshow. Nordkind is one of our staff artists, and he made, for example, that ISU 152 in the snow with this big barrel pointing. I love that image, and he's done some other stuff for us. Uh, Let's see, that's either level two or level three donator. I'm not sure. I think that's level two donator badge. We have High Five and Stafka. You know, it's funny, Stafka does nothing but troll you in the stream chats. But, he, <laughs> but here he is, an early contributor. Check that out. See, you know, people are diverse, right? You never know what you're going to get. Yeah. I wouldn't have expected Stafka to be right first in line, but here he is. So thank you, Stafka. All of your. Uh, Harassment is forgiven. I know you just mean it in fun. You know, Festive, when you when you talk to anybody in troll chat, the only way to communicate, like the language, I mean, sorry, the language of Twitch chat is troll chat, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, if you say something that's, serious, there's something wrong with you. Like, no, everything has to be- No, everybody was freaking out about the microphone, I thought it was one big troll. Yeah, like, you never know, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, that's the real challenge. How do you say something serious in Twitch chat? <laughs> You can't, because everything you say, people assume that it's just not that it's you're just BSing and trolling and so forth. So we've got yes. the we've got like this never cry wolf syndrome, like on mass, you know, like yeah. the massive effect of never cry wolf. Okay, patrons, <laughs> this is uh, level four. Uh, with the pa uh, with the level four, you get the first silver badge, and that is patron. And in this list, we this is the most popular badge purchased so far. This is four times six bucks is around. Uh, $24. So this uh, level, we have Jan252, our coder extraordinaire, who just enabled all of this new cyclone. We have Alcoholic. Thank you very much, Alcoholic. The Onion Man, who is a prolific Twitch chatter. I see him all over the place. He helped debug the mic issue. We have <laughs> Metam. We have Oak DK. We have Lumul, who is one of our, our staff members. And we have yours truly, Ami Cyclone. So when you click on these guys, and this is kind of fun, like you don't see their levels, but when you click on it, like if I click on myself, then it goes to my profile page and you can see, uh-oh, uh-oh, first bug discovered, where's Jan? Uh. Bug on profile page, formatting issue. This is what Jan and I do like all day, every day, is we, we <laughs> make sure that like the four is in the box. Anyway, that four is in the wrong spot. Let me see uh, where I have a post. Where do I have a post? Okay, entrance hall, new members. Let me just see if this bug is site-wide or if it's just in your profile page. Okay, I think I promoted somebody recently. We had two new devs join the site. We had um, we had Space Bus and Kyle join the site. Okay, the formatting is off everywhere. Oh, oh CSS does not load. Refresh again. Let's see what he's, control F5. What's going on here? Okay, select the window, control F5. Let's see if I can get the CSS to load properly. Let's see here, where are we going? All right, there we go. Okay, so if your number is not in your star, press control F5. So the CSS loaded, now my number is in my star, yay. So I am a level four uh, contributor. But I now really can, want... 
I want the leaves, can, so I think I'm gonna go to like level nine soon. Yes, you were saying. And can that can that go up if you if you donate once or twice? Can you and then donate more? Will it yeah, update? Of course. Also? Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Cool. Like right now, I've bought four levels, and then if I buy five more levels, I will go to level nine because I, w I want the little the little leaves. These badges were uh, designed by TM Dutchy, and they're really great. And even I am a sucker to my own marketing schemes. Like I want the little leaves. <laughs> 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 so I'm going to give another 20 bucks or something. But, uh, I'm glad you asked that question actually, Festive, because um, I have a tip for everybody out there. The way that PayPal's, PayPal fees work is there is a set fee. It's only like 35 cents or something that gets charged each time you donate. So it's better to buy all the levels at once because you only pay that 35 cent fee once. As opposed, like if you bought like 10 levels one at a time, that could add up, you know, this yeah. little fee. So it's better to buy, buy them in bulk, but um, PayPal also takes like 3%. But yes, I will get to the details of that. Okay, so that's how it looks on the forums. And let's go and read the rest of the OCF um, top contributors. Check chat, talking about farts and apes and stuff. Um, okay, <laughs> all right. All right, so where were we? All right, let me see. Let me just refresh this. Let me see if we got any in the last couple minutes. It was, oh, shit! So, excuse my French. <laughs> excuse my French, Love but we just went from 644 to 712, so we just unlocked another thing. Oh, boy, I think I did this unlock thing wrong. <laughs> this is what you discover when you're doing this, is like where to put your unlock tiers, you know? But anyway, right. we just unlocked the next tier because each like 600, 700, Woo! we're unlocking new shit. This so fits, thank this you, fits everyone. live for what? Less than an hour? All yeah, right. less than an hour. All right, so we we got we got new people in in my uh, patron level four like Pat Phoenix. Pat Phoenix, all right. We we got a whole bunch of new people. I'm gonna have to start from the from the beginning again. Okay. Donator level one, Korea Park, that's Korean Army. He's a very famous uh, Company of Heroes 1 player. I'm sure you guys have seen him on SNF before. Nordkind, Swan VIP, Unfinished Donut, North Weapon, Hoi Paul AD, who might get an invite to this thing. Hoi Paul is one of the top ladder players in this game. Nice to see Ho Hoi Paul AD on board. Um, Festive Long Johns, we know this guy. Did you just do it, like, somehow? Uh -huh. You sneak like while we were talking, you you yeah. pressed all the right buttons. Thank you, Sorry. thank you, sir. Thank you, Festive. I can look up because you're up there. Thank you, Festive. You're very welcome. Stafka, high five. High five is another one. Wait, now, now wait, high five. Is that the same as high five with all the e's? No. High five with all the e's. He's on staff, isn't he? Uh, yeah. I don't. Know. I'm pretty I'm sure. sure. Or is he not? Because the high five with all the E's did a lot of those great artworks. Um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like the two tigers in the snow. Mm -hmm. That's by high five. He's also been um, he's also been stealing the top trending votes with his like code2.org redesign sketches that he's been doing. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen yeah. those? Yeah, those are pretty cool. I like those. They're pretty cool, but I, I don't know how I feel about the purple from the British forces. I don't, I don't want code2.org to be purple. But anyway, yeah. maybe that's something that you could just pick pick a color. Anyway, I don't know. So I'm not sure if that's that high five or not. But anyway, and then we have What Doth Life. I've seen him all over stream chats everywhere. Okay, patron level four. We have myself, Oak DK, Lumul, Sherlock, Pat Phoenix. What a horrible username. <laughs> Did he just create that just to get on that list? I don't know. I, yeah, I think so. Maybe. He just wanted you to say Pat Phoenix on it, screen. It could be a Smurf. It could be a Smurf. <laughs> hey, if you're going to spend 24 bucks, I will say any, any username. <laughs> on stream that you could come up with. I have no problem <laughs> saying crass username on Sunday Night Fights. We try to keep it clean here. I don't like to swear. I like to keep it clean, but for this, we will make an exception. Okay, we got Metam, we got The Onion Man, we got Jan252, and we got Alcoholic. Uh, would you like to read the next two badges, Festive? Yeah, sure, give me the give me the hard ones. Uh, Pl Plizkin, uh, Kissio. And yeah. Fahu, of course, we all know Fahu. And we got Love Nest, and then the two or the three uh, top benefactors, obviously Woof, uh, Gaddafi, and uh, Doctor Wax. So there you go. Yes, AWA noob is Doctor Wax, and I have to click through because you just have to see this. This dude, look at that. Look at that badge and that number. 
Can we all can we all in Twitch chat? I don't know if Dr. Watts <laughs> is here right now, but can we all like give a little heart for this guy who is just you know like he is the, the huge fun funder of like the events we do here and just to everybody yo everybody on that list thank you very much huge props um i hope that over the next uh days weeks and months the list just grows and grows and the prize pool goes up and up and up and up and you know i think i did misestimate the interest in this festive because i my target for this is a thousand dollars like i want to at least have as much as we did in december for the tournament that we just ran in december yep i want uh, that's my target. if we can raise a thousand i'm gonna be happy and it oh, looks we'll get there it looks like we're on our way I all think right so, so i'm just gonna go back to this and describe the details you got to know about the fees and about where all the money goes because at code2.org we are totally transparent we want you to know everything. We're not trying to hide anything from you. So I must mention that 3% um, of your contribution is going to be deducted in a PayPal fee, around 3%, because they take like 2.9% plus 34 cents per transaction. That's the exact detail. So it ends up being around 3%. And then, so after the PayPal fee is, sub is subtracted, half of your contribution goes to the prize pool, and the other half goes to Code2.org. So that goes to people that own the site myself and you know other founders and we're going to make sure that guys like Jan who did all the coding and put in all the legwork to create this system are going to get a little piece of that and you know we have other founders like Seb and Marcus who th these guys built the site and wrote the backbone and of course you know I get the I get the major portion of that I have to admit to you guys because I put in just insane amounts of work and uh, I, I can see myself over the next two months almost like organizing this tournament almost it's almost like a full-time job that's how many hours yeah. i spend like either giving feedback to artists or creating the art myself or like like managing the tournament directors like getting all the rules perfect you know like negotiate like talking with the players talking with the casters it's it's a huge amount of work so so 50 percent of your contribution goes to co2.org and the other 50 percent goes directly into the prize pool and I just want to be totally transparent about that, say it right up front to you guys where that money's going. And I also want to mention in this section that uh, we're already giving you a better deal than like Valve is giving the contributors <laughs> to the Dota 2 International. I have to mention that, you know, you guys all know that I've been playing a lot of Dota 2 lately. I can tell a little story about that. I first booted up Dota 2, uh, you know, like it was suggested by some clan mates of mine, but also I wanted to see you know, Relic was searching for feedback on how to build a cool ops mode. Like, really mm. detailed feedback on what features an ops mode should have and, mm. you know, like, what drop downs you should be able to look at, like, how, how the charts should work, like, where, like, both armies here and both player cards here. Like, that's stuff that I worked really closely with Relic to help them design. Because you guys all know I wrote that huge, like, like complaint post, we need OBS mode now, right? <laughs> I wrote this huge post. I was like, we gotta have an OBS mode for the scene to grow and for CO2 to have a chance at an, as an eSport. And so, you know, the post worked wonders. And, you know, Greg Wilson in particular, like I worked with him personally and other uh, Relic designers and coders to, you know, get this OBS mode thing to happen. So I went to go do research on OBS mode by going in and playing Dota 2, which is, you know, also on Steam, that was in, that was that was a good game. To, like I had a choice, right? Like League of Legends or Dota 2, or maybe the new Blizzard MOBA. I don't know. But these are the most popular esports right now: Dota 2, League of Legends. And so I went to the Steam version because all that stuff that's in Dota 2, like the the community marketplace and everything that happens in there, could easily also happen for Company of Heroes 2 because they're both on Steam, right? So I go in there and I'm checking it all out. And, you know, like I was seduced. I started having a lot of fun, like actually playing the game. So I've, I've played a ton of Dota 2 and I've actually, I've learned so much. And then watching Valve conduct this international, you know, this, the international five starts tomorrow and they have a $17 million prize pool. What? Exactly. What? It's, it's by far like twice as much or like the, la the the next three biggest esports events ever 
don't add up to 17 million. Like it's like it's already like four times bigger than the next biggest that esports is, event ever. Oh my God. 17 million dollars. All right. <laughs> and so the reason I'm telling you this story is because I wanted to make the point that when you like contribute to the international prize pool, like say you buy like some kind of cosmetic item in, in Dota 2, say you spend 10 bucks, 25% of your contribution goes to the prize pool directly and 75% hmm. goes to Steam. So I figure our little grassroots community with what I'm doing here, you know, like this is like a little mini Company of Heroes 2 compendium, you know, like stretch goals, unlocks, like, like I learned so much about how like a crowdfunded esports event works. I learned it in Do Dota 2. And so this is our like mini grassroots version of that. And so, you know, you've got this list of unlocks here that you can see. And we're already giving you like a much better deal than Valve. Valve takes 75%. We're only taking 50%. We're sending 50% straight to the players. And because that's what gets us excited. And that's what gets the players excited. That's what gets the fans excited. When they're fighting for a big prize pool, you know, the pressure's on. You know, yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, like we, we haven't, you know, the, the, the idea of this whole tournament has leaked out. And hopefully that has had the effect that we see great players playing the game. You know, I saw Jeslin streaming recently. Haven't seen him in ages. I saw Debm, yeah. you know, getting like posted in the replays. I saw Aimstrong. Aimstrong is top of the Wehrmacht ladder. What the heck? This yeah. guy hasn't played Company of Heroes 2 in months. And suddenly I look at the Wehrmacht ladder and Aims, like Simon Aimstrong is number one. And then Jeslin had to fight to take that number one spot back. And I might be tooting my own horn, patting myself. Maybe it's, maybe they're psyched about Brits. You know, like I, it could be other things that are bringing them back to the game. But I think having an event to look forward to gives players and fans like all something to like ra rally around, like a oh, reason yeah. to play matchmaker, a reason to get top of the ladder, a reason to sure. cut, like cut your skills and hone them and, you know, like post replays and develop strats and all that. So that's that's what we're after. And this is that's, and this is how we're going to get there. <laughs> All right, so Festive, uh, before I let you go, actually, and get Siez on here, would you please uh, read out our um, contribution stretch goals? Sure. Thank so you. So we've already we've already met the, the top three, which is awesome. Uh, for 500 bucks, which got us there, you know, Dr. Wax got us most of the way there. Uh, we got a site update showing contributor badges. We already kind of went over that. Um, Six hundred dollars gets us a splash screen set by APF and TM Dutchie. That's me. Uh, I love to make those splash oh, screens. Yeah, APF. There you go. You <laughs> might you might remember those from our last tournament, like the slides that will show in between games during the intermissions. Mm -hmm. Those are like little miniature works of art. We like to be like war reporters, and we like yeah, to go into the games cool. and try to get some sweet angles. And that's the thing about Company of Heroes, man. It is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. I tried to I tried to take some screenshots in Dota. You know, like a, like I like to play axe and I had axe like cutting somebody's head off and then I took some screenshots and then I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. And then I was like, kind of, eh. But yeah. Company of Heroes 2, man, you can make works of art in this game. Yeah, you really it's, can. It's so cool. Uh, it's funny because when you play the game, you don't really notice those little things, but then when you go to cast and you, you, you kind of just, you kind of take yourself away from it just a bit, and it's, oh, it's so gorgeous. It's so pretty. But, uh, Anyway, for, for the $700 stretch goal, we got a uh, new emoticon pack for Kochu.org, Speedrig, Siberian, and Romeo. So that's and unlocked. That's, that's unlocked. Yeah, All right, let, let, me, there. let me show you guys that really quick. I can go to my e emails because uh, we because I, I wonder if Jan is working this on working on this already. Because <laughs> now that because, you know, Jan, Jan's the man, dude. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it are if it already works. It probably doesn't. I'm probably <laughs> Like putting too much on his plate, but here, let me show you those since they're already unlocked because they emailed them to me. Who yeah. who were the players yeah. that are unlocked? One more time. Uh, Siberian and Romeo. All right, so I'm I'm loading those uh, really quick, and I can show you. It's basically we're we're importing the Twitch emotes from their subscribers on uh, their channel yeah. into Code2.org proper so that you guys can use them in the shout box and in your posts. Oh, so I ha I, here here. You can have a sneak peek at my mailbox. There's nothing all that special in there. Where is this? They're, they're getting it. They're New event stretch goal, your emotes. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, and so, all right. So here, here's a sneak preview of 
of, of their emotes. All right, so here's Love Nest. You get Love Derp, Love Army, Love Carrot. <laughs> Uh, Helping Hands has quite a collection as the most popular streamer. He's got the most emotes. Hands Rage, Hands Gasm, Hands USA, <laughs> a tank, Hands Stug, Hands Woot, what? Hands what? Hands what? And Hands RNG God. <laughs> Gotta go for the RNG God. That'll be popular. This one's gonna get a lot of use in the chat box. The yeah. RNG God. All right, and then we have down here, we have Romeo. We have Romeo Bang, Romeo Hair Day. Romeo Hype, Romeo Mug, Romeo Please, and <laughs> Romeo Pro. I thought Romeo was semi-pro, though, but I guess Romeo's pro. I think Hands is semi-pro. Does that mean the hand, that Romeo's... I like to troll. Yes. <laughs> All right, Sib's got some fresh ones. Check these out. Sib Waddle. These are so nice. Somebody in the chat, who made these for Sib? Because they are so good. Who made these? Please tell me. Oh, yeah. Was those it like Strumming cool. Bird? One of the top artists made these, because just look how perfect this is as a little icon. Trying to do something at 24px is impossible. It's like a whole other art form. Making sweet icons, you know, that... Yeah. So who made Sib's icons, guys? Okay. Image Hostop. Maybe he knows. Look at... They, they've got them all. Look. There's a spam of <laughs> Sib icons coming in the chat. I love it. Oh. All right. So we got Sib Waddle, Sib FM which is of course playing I'm Big in Japan. Sib Tux, this is so cool. This one is so cool. He's, he's dressed up as he was for one of the SNF events and he's got like these like gold shades on. I love that one. That is probably my favorite Twitch emote of all time. Sib Tux, just, just looks so good. Sib Toxic, excellent. Sib Heart, Sib DZ. I don't really know what that means. Do you know what that is? What's DZ? Uh, I have no idea. We'll have to ask the chat on that one. In jokes. In jokes. All right. Sib <laughs> Hyena reminds me of that video where somebody put his face on that crazy dude dancing around with the sweatpants. That and was then, awesome. Oh, and man. then Sib Pheasant. All right. So so did we already unlock Siberian's emotes? Back, back to we the... Did. All right. Great. So you'll be able to use all of those. Just uh, put some colons around them and you'll be able to use them all on Code2.org chat box and in posts and so forth. So, All right. So back to our um unlock list we have already unlocked 600 and 700 i'm so thankful you guys it's awesome i'm just gonna re refresh again oh An another 15 just jumped bucks. again yeah it just jumped again we're at 762 all right please festive carry on all right so we're rapidly approaching the 800 stretch goals which is uh, the after action report by serentini and our strategists so what, what exactly is that? I'm, I'm that's, curious. That's nice. That's where, where our strategy team goes through and looks at like which strategies were played in the tournament, which were the most popular ones. Like which factions cool. are strongest. They do like a statistical analysis, you know? Right. They count like this faction was picked so many times in round four. This one was picked so many times in round five. This one had this win percentage. This one, you know, like oh, these commanders yeah. were chosen. Like you get, you. there's no better way to get a sense of the meta than to have a tournament like this. Like yep. the, the balance guys at Relic should be thanking us because we are about <laughs> to deliver them on a platter like the ultimate balance review, right? Yep. So the tournament and that statistical analysis that our strategists will do will be like a portrait of the current meta, like what the strongest strategies are. And so you guys as players can go and take the strategies, learn from the pros, and jump into Code 2 Auto Match and wall up all your opponents with them. Um, and then we'll watch, you know, the, the overpowered units get nerfed and so forth. So, so that'll be coming from our strategists. We're almost there That's to that one. Awesome. Uh, the nine hundred dollar goal is Love Nest and Hans as emoticons. So, those will obviously be. Uh, I'm sure we'll be getting those pretty shortly at the rate we've been going so far. Uh, and then the thousand dollar goal is the opening ceremony All Star game on a four v four map created by our own Monolithic Bacon. And we're going to be voting for the All Stars. That should be pretty. That's going to be really cool. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Eleven hundred dollar goal is the top ten contributors get a game of their choice casted by Tightrope. That's pretty sweet. Love his cast. He does great, great work over there. Go check him out if you haven't. So, uh, so each each of those top ten contributors will be able to say either cast my game or cast this particular game that I obs or something. You know, like they'll be able to just submit a game of their choice, and Tightrope is going to cast. 
those 10 games. So thank you to Tightrope for offering to do that. That is mighty fine, mighty fine. Yep. All right. So for $1,250, we got a fan art contest with prizes run by Von Kluge and our social media staff. I love those. Then, I'm an artist at heart, so I love those. And then for $1,500, we got a bracket poster by Ami and uh, Team Dutchy and our artists. That's like a really fancy version of, um, you know, what you saw before in this spoiler. Like, this is a really boring, like, you know, black and white text version. Basically, gotcha. we'll, we'll do a whole work of art that just looks awesome and throw in all the player player names nicely formatted, you know, with like maybe credits to the top benefactors, stuff like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll make something sweet. sweet. We, we did it for all the previous SNF seasons, so I think you guys nice. enjoy that. They look good on the stream, too, and in the news posts. All right. But they take a lot of work. All these things take a lot of work. So it, it just made sense that they would be stretch goals. Yeah, it's perfect. All right, so for seventeen fifty, we got a DLC giveaway for contributors who reached level one, which is pretty sweet. And then that's that, you want to talk about that real quick? That's pretty. Well, basically, awesome. we would we would purchase Kotu.org would purchase a collection of DLCs. Level one is nicely ambiguous because you know that'll <laughs> happen like at the end because we don't know we, what we can get and how much we can get of it you know maybe relic will provide dlcs we're, we're not sure we're, we're talking with relic about this kind of stuff so we're, we're going to basically make a package of dlcs and then we're just going to give them away to like probably random contributors you know cool. like we'll have some kind of giveaway and you know if you contributed then you will get that and then so level one is ambiguous as in you know we'll buy so much and then, like, later on in the um, list, you see level two. And so level two will be more DLCs. Like, maybe there will be full games. And, you know, like, we'll, we'll buy more, basically, and then give those away. But we haven't, we haven't decided what they are yet. So we'll post that once we lock it all down. All right. Sounds good. And then for the $2,000 goal, we get a winner interview post event broadcast on Sunday Night Fights. That is, that's awesome. That's well, that, cool. that'll be me. I'll, I'll be yeah. doing that with the yeah. winner. We have to That's mention soap. Sweet. We have to say soap now. That's the only thing we need to say. Soap. 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 Okay. Soap. You don't get the reference? Right. No. What's the reference? You're not a true it. fan of Sunday Night Fights channel. Guys I'm in sorry. chat, tell them what soap is. I asked Barton what his favorite food was in the when he, after <laughs> he won Sunday Night Fights season five. I asked Barton, "What's your favorite food?" And he said, "Soap." And it was just <laughs> he was saying soup, but it really sounded like soap. Uh, and I okay. kept asking, "Wait, soap?" And he said soap like, soap soap it was like his like it's like his mom feeds him soap for dinner <laughs> he was saying soup i think but anyway yeah. so it's, it's a running joke now anyway so uh, nice. whoever like wins it. the tournament will get a live webcam interview sweet and then for so we got uh 2250 we got an in-game tourney decal designed by tm dutchy that's pretty I, would, awesome. I want that one i don't know what that would be but i'm sure you would do something awesome with it and then we got the $2,500 goal. Oh, sorry, go ahead. The nice thing about this tournament is that, you know, like you're not allowed to wear your decals into auto match games. So we rarely see them, you know, because Relic right. didn't put them in auto match. But in the tournaments, that's custom games. So all yeah. the decals will be like in full glory. I'm actually really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing which decals the players choose to, to like put on their tanks, you know, <laughs> in their tourney games. That's going to be mm -hmm. hot. And so That'll we, be the so, first time we'll have seen something like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, really like in full force, you know, because mm -hmm. we're used to watching top players just stream auto match where they're not allowed to show them off. So in the tournament, they are allowed to show them off. I would encourage nice. all players, of course, to wear Kotu.org decals because they're sweet. But I'm sure they will wear <laughs> a, an entire variety of stuff on their tanks. Oh, yeah. So where were we? Okay, 2500 is a new set of custom forum avatars by our artists. Yes, and, and then, you guys surely know all the avatars created by Strumming Bird so far. If you if you go on Kotu.org, you can go to your user profile, and there's like 30 avatars, all drawn humorously by uh, Strumming Bird. They're all so cool, and yeah, you can just pick awesome. one and wear it. And so we'll we'll create some more. Hopefully, I can get Strumming Bird to do it. But if if he doesn't have time to do it, then I'll get somebody else to do it. So cool. So for the 2750, we've got custom loopable stream anthem by SNF composer Linsky for all to use. Ooh, 
that's yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's I, like a new piece of music composed just for this. So you guys were enjoying Linsky's um, tracks that he did for SNF, like during the slideshow at the beginning. Most of that was Linsky. Right now we hear Stefenfu in the background, but most was Linsky. And so, like streamers, they often need non-copyright music to go in the background, like during their casts. So basically, mm -hmm. he would just make one. And it would be like five minutes long and it would be loopable. And then any caster could use it during any cast or, you know, if you're a streamer during during the breaks, whatever. Oof, that's sweet. So for the $3,000 goal, we got the contributor two level DLC giveaway. We kind of talked about that earlier. Yep. Um, and then the 3250 is to be determined. We'll see. Right. We don't know. We don't expect to get that far. <laughs> but if we do, yep. we will come up with new stuff. I th right. had a funny thought uh, earlier because people were like talking about SNF six. Like the the funny thought is the the last stretch goal could be you unlock season six of SNF. Ooh, I like the sound <laughs> of just, that. Just a funny thought though. Yeah, no, gar be, no guarantees. Uh, just a, just a funny thought. We'll just you know throw that little carrot out there. Throw that out we'll there. See. We'll see. We'll see. Let me refresh my prize pool. We're at seven sixty two. Let's see if it went anywhere in the last seven ninety seven. <laughs> Oh, this is wow. great! Uh, it's, we're doing a telemarket a thon. <laughs> Man, hey, hey, I could stay streaming all night long if it means you guys are gonna keep kicking up the prize pool. Cause bigger prize pool, bigger event. You know, more publicity, more attention. It's great. All right, yeah. we're we're get it. We're really getting up there. Uh, and I personally thank all of you for your contributions. I can't wait to read the forums and see all these levels brandished you know proudly under avatars um festive i think i'm gonna bring siaz on now all right thanks for joining me for this launch um of course did you want to give some shout outs maybe to your clan mates or other friends before you yeah you go? shout out to everybody in rng and this whole community you guys are awesome this has been super fun i'm really excited for this this tournament I'm really excited to cast some some top tier games and uh, yeah, it was great chatting with you, Ami. Thanks for thanks for having me on. My ah, just pleasure. noticed you saw my little pit stay. Entirely, statement. yeah. Show it off. Where, what pride? Um, maybe maybe tell us a little bit more about RNG before you go. Yeah, um, you know, we're just like most video game clans. We just kind of hang out and team speak and shoot the shit and play Co2 and uh, we got to know each other pretty well and yeah, well enough to go travel halfway across the world to meet one another so you know that's uh we're, we're not real organized we don't have events or anything like that the game the game kind of uh you know was stale for a little while we had a lot of people kind of uh you know deviating going yeah, playing waffle, other games and stuff but yeah, yeah yeah exactly but i don't are know we're getting some momentum back members yeah we are we're always you know if you guys want to just hang out and it really, it's all we are. You just come hang out and team speak and play some games with us. We we play some games with the Angry Bears every now and then. So, you know, add me on Steam. We'll play some games. What does the acronym stand for? RNG, yeah. random number generator, nothing, <laughs> not other. <laughs> okay. well, some of them are hard to guess. Like, uh, what, what what was it? The the WMD. You always, of course, thought it right. stood for Weapons of Mass Destruction, but it didn't. It stood for uh, Where's My Demo. So sometimes Where's you don't know, so I had to ask. No, um, it's we're not that creative. <laughs> another thing, Tom, before you go, where's this cat I've been hearing about? This cat? Get He's napping. Get him. All right. Can you, can you wake him up? I mean, oh, it's, yeah. It's yeah. SNF, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pri yeah. Priorities. Yeah. SNF higher than cat naps. <laughs> Let me see if we can get the cat on the camera to say hi to you guys. There we go. <sighs> oh my god, it's like still asleep. <laughs> uh, he's that just is chilling. That's a lot right of now. white fur right there. Is he's that a, a Persian or something? Mwah. Say hi, buddy. What's he's up? Like, he's like. Fuck you, I was sleeping. Look at him. He's like, I was so sleeping and would so rather be sleeping. What is this? No, he's cool. He'll just, he just kind of hangs out. <sighs> so he's, uh, we don't really know. We got him off of Craigslist, man. Like, this is seriously like the coolest cat ever. He's so fucking chill. He looks pretty chill. Like, he can he care wants... less about whatever this is that's going on. 
Yeah, no. All he all he wants to do is just hang out. Uh, but yeah, we got him off Craigslist. Like, who goes to Craigslist and is like, okay, um, yeah, I have a problem cat that I can't take care of anymore. You can have him for free, and then have it be this cool. But, you took uh, a cat that was advertised as a problem cat. Well, no, nobody's gonna call it a problem cat. But if you're giving it away on Craigslist, I mean, you can kind of assume that. This cat has some issues. When we first got him, he was kind of a son of a bitch. He would, pardon my French, he would, uh, he, he was an outdoor cat and just, he would just get into everything. He'd like climb up on the counter and paw shit open and take a bite out of every slice of bread in the, uh, <laughs> the damn thing. <laughs> What's his but, name? Uh, Jack. Jack. Jack, yep. He, uh, no, he is, he's not high. This is just how it... You should see him when he's not napping. Well, actually, he still pretty much just does this. He's pretty cute. But nice he's, to meet you, Jack. Welcome to Sunday Night sleepy. Fights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. Go we back can do to this sleep. all day. All right. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jack. Festive, thanks for coming on. Um, I look forward to your casts of the upcoming Operation Charlie Fox games. <laughs> awesome, man. I am too. Thanks for having me. All right. I'm going to go to the slideshow real quick. We're going to get Siaz wired up, and maybe he and I will cast a game or something. We'll be right back after a short break. Let's knock that thing over 800. Look at that. 799.78. We're on the brink of the next unlock. Thanks to everybody for contributing, and we will be right back after a short little intermission.
What's up, dude? That's me doing the uh, soundtrack <laughs> for my sizzle video. <laughs> I'm gonna right. say, that was uh, quite an unexpected intro. Uh, first order of business. Bang. Ciez. Welcome to the program. How you doing? Good, good. How are you been? Man, I'm riding high, man. This is just great. I'm so excited, you know, watching this prize pool go up incrementally during the stream. Is a tournament organizer's dream come true? Let me just refresh. Oh yeah, eight hundred. The emotes are unlocked, or the or whatever the eight hundred goal was. Let's see, eight hundred was after action report by Serentini and our strategists, of which you are one. So, indeed, yeah, you ready to yeah. do some work? Sure, of course, always ready to do stuff for the Kotu scene, Kotu community. All right, because you have been charged with an after action report, you and Serentini and the rest of your strategist lot. Ciaz, how you doing on this fine Saturday morning? I'm doing awesome. I'm glad to see the prize pool already over $800. I think it would be amazing if it could get to 1,000 by the end of the kickoff stream. And we still have what, like two months before it goes live, so we should have an awesome prize pool for it. Dude, Ciaz, I was hoping it would get to 1,000 by the start of the tournament. <laughs> I think we'll get there. I, mean, I think we'll be good. I'm not a presumptuous person, I guess. But, I mean, and you're you're saying you would like to see it get to 1,000 by the end of the stream. Yeah, sure, you know. Gotta shoot for the stars. Or what is it? Shoot for the moon, you land among the stars? Something like that. I don't know. Just want to be positive about it. Hell yeah, man. That would be great. I'm going to keep uh, hitting refresh. I'm having so much fun. Um, CS, tell me a little bit about this recent July patch now that you've had a few days to play on it? Um, I really, really like it. I think it's done a lot of good for the game. I was actually talking to Jason from Relic for like a really, really long time last night, and it accomplished a lot of their goals of wanting to remove frustrating RNG from the game, like plane crashes and uh, abandoned, well, I guess not abandoned things, but like death crits. Uh, the only problems I see with it right now, Auster's starting manpower is pretty crazy high. I think like Auster is always a squad ahead now, which makes it really rough for US. Uh, and the M5 might come a little bit early, but um, that combined with some of the other plans that Relic has in the pipeline, uh, I think we have a really awesome future for Co2 ahead of us. That's a nice review. That's very nice. It's very encouraging to hear these things. Um, yeah, Jason Lee just registered on Co2.org about a week ago. It was very pleased to see him given his developer badge and I you know instantly he had twice as many subs on kotu.org as I do <laughs> <laughs> well he, he was just posting registered he made one post he's like yeah that was mostly Brad I've made like <laughs> 11,000 posts and I have 10 subs he has like 24 subs thanks kotu.org to be fair a lot of your work uh, is behind the scenes you know uh, whereas <laughs> know. he was I'm, like I'm hey guys shit I don't really care at all yeah. but it, it's just funny <laughs> Um, you know, like the community is ready to give <laughs> mad love. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm -hmm. our hearts are huge. You know, it's like just, you know, ready. So I I'm glad that you have encouraging things to say about it. But you're still working closely with Relic, right? I mean, you've already played yeah. the Brits, haven't you? And I have. Can you yeah, say I was, that? Uh, are you allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're allowed to say at this point. Um, yeah. I was in that uh, alpha test, beta test, whatever they called it, you know, with all of the community. And um, the design of the Brits is awesome. Uh, hopefully it doesn't break NDA to say that I think it's gonna I'm give sure allies a lot more. And like threes and fours, how everyone complains about three and four balance. I think Brits will help uh, allies a lot in those modes. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so you've already, have you driven the tank that's in our poster there? I think it's a Comet, is that a is that a comet that's in the game? I think it's in the game. It might be approaching NDA. I, let's just not go there. I, I have no idea how strict everything is now. Jan was actually worried that we put a British tank in the poster. I'm like, dude, it's not even, like, it looks like it's from Co2, but it's not even from Co2. It's just a picture of a British tank. It's like, yeah. like people are so paranoid, man, that, of, you know, NDA raking and so forth anyway. But hopefully all of that will be past us soon. And, yeah. uh, 
It's crazy that, you know, this tournament is the second two weekends of September and Brits launch on September 3rd. So. Oh, are Brits going to be allowed in the tournament? Yeah, why not, uh, right? I mean, okay, I guess. Okay, okay. I mean, what are we going to do? Say no Brits? <laughs> you know, like we're not going to. You know, it, they would have to be extremely <clears throat> Tiger Ace <clears throat> on launch <clears throat> broken for us to like say no Brits in the tournament, right? And I. I and right. from what I hear from you and others, that's not going to be the case. So as long as everything's, you know, relatively hunky-dory, the, the players will have, what? They'll have three weeks to get their, get their, uh, get their scrats in, in order and their micro, you know, tight. And then who knows? The Brits may have a huge influence on the, the, the winner of this tournament. But, yeah, I mean, this, this is a great early opportunity to see how everything stacks up when the game has five factions. Yeah, and I guess we'll have enough time if something, like if a commander or something is just Tiger yeah. Ace stupid. You can yeah, if one particular commander is totally broken, then we'll just we'll just nix it. But that that's something we'll work on in the rules, like, you know, a week before the tournament happens or something. Yeah, like we always listen to the community, and generally when there's something like that, it's really obvious. So it's, it's actually pretty right. easy. I mean, sometimes it's difficult. Like... For SNF Five, it was difficult because actually, you know, the whole thing was sponsored by Sega, and they wanted everything in, you know. And then that was also yeah. when, like, mid-season, the Tiger Ace got released, so we were kind of in a pinch, you know. Like, you know, so so that was a bit difficult. But I think everything's changed so much since then. Like, the the way that commanders are released, and you know, like the general feeling about like. Anything that's close to pay-to-win DLC has gotten really negative reactions. So I think Relic has heard that, and I, and they're definitely not releasing as many commanders as they did at the beginning. And I think so. I think they listen. And so I don't think we'll face those kinds of situations. But um, I'm I'm very interested to see. You know, like it's going to be thrilling in those first few weeks of September. You know, we, we'll be watching players stream one v ones. You know, fighting it out with Brits, and then it'll be so interesting to give them their first chance on the like grand stage of like a tournament for money in this event. It's always fun right when something big and new like that is released because there aren't any established build orders, right? And so it's cool to see like the evolution of the faction uh, when people are preparing to take it into a tournament setting. Like what, what can it accomplish? And uh, we'll see who's the most creative and uh, who can adapt the fastest will have a big impact, I think. Yeah, and we we might be surprised by some kind of like secret pocket strat that somebody found and nobody knows about, you know? It launches exactly. September 3rd. The first uh, day of the tourney is um, September 20th. That's the open qualifier. So that's 17 days later. Somebody might just premiere something, you know, like and just like rush through the open qualifier just decimating people. Who knows? But it's exciting that that kind of stuff, that there's the potential for that. So it'll be a really fresh meta, and so it should provide for some really fresh tournament games. Yeah, and then you would like, <clears throat> it would be awesome to see somebody like rush through the group stage, um, and then like everybody have to scramble and try and figure out how do I counter this guy yeah, and his scary strat that no one's. To yeah, it exactly. Out before the main event the following weekend. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm looking forward to it, man. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Let me hit refresh. Think you think we're more than 8:05 now? I think we would be. 816, it's like a steady income. Wait, I, I just really quick, let's go to the contributors page. I want to see who it is that is that is doing all of this. You guys are so great. Let's see. Let me go to the top contributors page and just, I want to watch this list grow in real time. Awesome. Check it out. Look at that. So these are all the people that have donated. That's literally twice as many people as the last time I showed it. Still no nobody new, can uh, no new compete with yet. Dr. Walks. Yeah, yeah right. Dr. Walks is alone at the top. Or any gold badge. Yeah, or Stone yeah. Tiger Gaddafi or Woof. And Woof even pledged uh, even some more money. He, he, his badge might jump up again. Um, and and I have to also have to mention with Stone Tiger Gaddafi, not only did he buy those, let's click on <coughs> it real quick, not only did he buy those 35 levels, but he also put the $50 Coco Jumbo award on top of that. So that's extra that he contributed, and 100% of that $50 is going to go straight to that player. And so I guess Sturm Tiger Gaddafi and myself or Romeo or, you know, like a couple of the directors of the tournament are going to have to just pick 
the most interesting meta strat from all the games that we watch on that main weekend? Maybe you can help us. What about if you pick like a top five and then put it on a kota.org poll or something like that? That's a possibility. I'll talk to Storm Tiger Gaddafi. He'll have the end say. But it was really something okay. that we wanted kind of selected by experts. So maybe I should throw it over to you, you strategists. If yeah. anybody can pick a non-meta strat, it would be you strategists. So maybe, maybe hopefully, maybe you can lead the way in that regard. Yeah, yes, sure. I have I'd to say happy. thanks yeah. for uh, posting in the. I, I made a call to all shoutcasters and staff members, like who wants to you know be on the broadcast list for this event. And Siaz was very quick to respond. And you know, like we need players slash analysts, and you fit that role. And we've already cast. We cast. Um, what do we do? Did we do the finals of the Dr. Vox tournament? Or did we do Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I Sunday I did a lot of games with Romeo, but then on, on that Monday the finals was you and me. And now you have better internet, right? Well, yeah, the internet's slightly better because AT and T kept messing up and so to make up for it they're like, Hey, we'll make it better for you. But also I finally convinced my wife to let me get a hundred foot long Ethernet cable so I'm no longer having to stream or play on Wi Fi. Oh my so, God. Did you have the, to like uh, run it around the corners from one room into another room and stuff? <laughs> Did you have to try yes. to make it look nice with like nails and tape and uh, running wires? No, is we hard. just. Uh, I, I know this. That's what I. I'm an electronic yeah. artist, so running wires is like a lot of what I do. But did you I mean, try to make fine. it look uh, nice? Or is yeah, it just put it, like, we have like a we have like a area rug on our floor in like the family room where I am right now, and so I just kind of ran it under the under rug, rug and it doesn't yeah, make into a the bedroom. That you trip no, on. no, no. All right, cool. Okay, now that we've got the details of, of CS's house wiring sorted out, um, we've seen we've got a lot more uh, like donator levels, which is cool. I, I I'm very curious to watch this list grow, and I wonder I wonder if there will be you know like any competition at the top, like people trying to outdo each other. That's what you of course does. Mean. Is there anything in place for the number one donator ever? Because that yet. might inspire some of that. Well, yeah, no, we didn't come up with anything like that. I don't want, I don't want to make it too much like that, you know. Because yeah, basically, yeah. we appreciate every single contribution, no matter how big or small. You know, a lot of people oh, are in a course. lot of different situations, so I think that's why we shied away from that kind of thing. But like, the only thing we have remotely like that is tightrope shoutcasting games, as prescribed by the top ten donators. So top mm -hmm. 10 get games of their choice personal shout crafts just for them you know it's like we're a small community and you know we're doing what we can and i hope you guys appreciate that like myself i'm an artist so a lot of the things in this list are like oh we'll make some art stuff but i hope you guys appreciate that because you know like i look at i look at what we do i step back for a second and i look at the art of this poster like what tm dutchie did and you know it's like i think that's one of co2.org's strongest points is that we that we really get into the beauty of this game and its engine and we turn like scenes from the game into like works of art. I think that's one of our strengths. I think I think it's it might be like an underappreciated strength because as far as like just gaming and fighting and winning, you know, it's it's not necessary, right? Like you could play Tetris that has no fancy graphics at all and you could have a huge competition it could be awesome and you could win and you could get all the same thrills but with co2 and with co2.org we really try to embellish everything and make it beautiful and i think that's what sets us apart a little bit because that's where our strengths are i mean the most important part of uh any community and especially like tournaments is definitely the viewers you know you could have the best game ever but if nobody wants to watch it or put money towards it then you're screwed yeah, you have to have that. You have to have the community, and you have to make it fun to watch. We try to, and we try to adorn things, you know, with all of our, with like our tourney logos and our posters and our brackets and stuff. And we try to just make things look good and, and memorable. Like I kind of remember the different seasons by their art styles and stuff like that. Anyway, all right. So, let's see. I interrupted you. We were talking about the game, and we were talking about Brits coming out, and mm -hmm. maybe we should go take a look at a game because we just got this patch. And you kind of hinted that there's more patching to come, as if you know stuff that we don't. <laughs> did, did you guys hear um, that? I heard him kind of say, like, and the stuff that's coming. It's, it's, it's in. Okay. Do you know why? Okay, so Rel Relic ran this beta, and you guys all played on, like, all the changes, and then they only patched in some of the changes. Can you talk a little bit about mm -hmm. why they need to do that or what's going on? Okay, so... 
if my memory serves me right, there there was like a list of changes that were in kind of test the testing um, stage, right? And then they were like, hey, let's throw these changes in with Brits, and then we're gonna let a bunch of people test that. And then also they're like, hey, we have some future ideas that we want to test. Uh, for example, like the call-in stuff, you know, tying um, Easy Eights and T3045s to tech rather than having them be call-ins. Mm -hmm. They later on said, hey, this might be a good idea. Why don't we test it? And then they even had in the game, like after you do a match, sometimes you'd get prompted with a survey. They would say, you know, how do you feel about the new like medium tank tech changes or whatever it said? And so they got direct feedback from players that way. So. The long story short is the changes that hit on the first patch were the ones that they had been had you know they'd been testing it for a while and felt comfortable releasing those. Mm -hmm. And then the second batch of changes that we just got, uh, I guess what last week or earlier this week, were yeah, like less tested. So they just want to have more time to vet those. And even some of those got cut because there's some even other like really drastic changes in there that they kind of cut those out because other people didn't like them or they just, you know, they just didn't fit right. And you were part of Code2.org's uh, patch review, weren't you? Did you provide some? Yeah. I've, I've got that here. Uh, just go to news. We can check out the, um, the July patch. Uh, we've never had so many writers on one news post. Pig Soup, Fanboard, Com Ash, Kank, and Tightrope. And so, and they go through and they really break down and give some uh, individual feedback on each of the changes that occurred. And so, I definitely, as a shoutcaster, need to read this in depth. I'm going to be a little bit out of my depths here, Siaz. You'll have to carry me because we're going to cast a game together, aren't we? Yeah, sure, of course. So, we're going to go and, oh, I should warn all you players. We'll probably start in maybe five minutes. So, all you 1v1 players here in chat. If you want to be featured in the stream, I see Love Nest there drawing carrots and stuff. And I wonder if Paul is still around or if Jeslin is online today. But uh, who did you mention? Cruzy and Aimstrong were in a game? So we're yeah. going to cast a 1v1 game of our choosing in about five minutes. So if you, got, you guys still have a chance to throw your names in the pool and maybe we'll cast your game. So Sia's and I will cast one 1v1 one, one one game. And so if you guys start searching now, you'll be eligible to be on the show. Oh my god, Ciaz. We what? just whoa, whoa, went whoa. we just went from eight hundred and five or something, eight hundred and ten to eight hundred and seventy eight. Oh, wow. Since you See, came I told you since you came you on. To make it to 1, 000, man. We're almost at nine hundred. Ah you guys are awesome. Ah, what is happening? What is happening? <laughs> Man, you know, I, I had no idea how to make those stretch goals. When I first wrote the stretch goals, the first goal was $100. The second goal was $200. You know, I had no idea how to make them. You know, I've never done this before. And then, and then I thought, man, this, you know, we better approach some people early, like Dr. Vox, you know? Because if I make stretch goals, like, up to, like, 1,000, and he comes in and bam, you know, it's like suddenly my whole plan is destroyed, right? Because there'd be nothing, no more goals. We, we'd reach them all too quick. So that's why I approached a couple of these guys early. Woof, Sturm Tiger Gaddafi, Dr. Vox. And so I had kind of an idea that we would start with around 500 bucks. But I had no idea that we would almost double it within the few hours of launching. That's awesome. So what if, I, I'll ask this to the chat. So if we got to $1,000, would people want, like, if I did like a 24-hour stream tonight, you know, starting tonight, if we got to a thousand dollars, would that be something people would like donate extra for? I'm just trying to think of a way to get people Dude, to. Dude, I would donate extra for that. You would do a 24-hour <laughs> stream tonight if we reach a thousand dollars. You're so silly. You should have made it higher. <laughs> We're gonna make it, dude. Look at <laughs> it's 878. Okay, how about what's gonna make it like 1100? I don't know, but I think uh, if you, I don't know. I think we're gonna make it though. Yeah, we're okay, gonna make by it. By when? It by when? By the end of this stream? Because all, yeah, all I plan to do with you... Oh, wait. We got to get Dutchie on. Holy smokes. Okay, before... what? Cat, uh, let, me, let me just uh, ping Dutchie real quick. I wanted to have him on real fast just to say hello because, you know, like primarily Dutchie and Jan 
put this whole thing together, you know? Like, they did so oh, much all, work. Awesome. I really wanted to get Dutchie on the show really quick. Do I have him on sure. Steam? Where do I have him? Where were we even talking? I'm totally lost. But, but maybe we could just add him to this call. Yeah, uh, sure. Like, right now. Um, so, your Steam window might go funny for a second. Sure. Because I'm going to try to... Whoops! <laughs> Yeah, I definitely pressed the wrong button. Um, <laughs> I just made you huge. Where do I get my options back? Oh, my God, dude. I'm such a Skype noob. Show contacts. Okay, here we go. All right. So now you can see all the real names of all my friends. They're going to get mad at you. Um, don't don't look at this list. <laughs> okay, here we go. He's online. And let me see. add to group call. All right. Uh, TM Dutchy, are you there? I am here. TM Dutchy, you are here. Excellent. Welcome to I the show. Am. You're Thank here you and all. you're live. Um, let me just reframe. Okay, well, we see your name and we see Ciez. Um, so we, we're hearing TM Dutchy, but we're not seeing him. So, TM Dutchy, you created the poster and the art for this, the entire theme. For Operation Charlie Fox, like if you're seeing anything about this event, be it a contributor badge or the, um, who's, is that you typing? You got to mute your mic if you're going to type CS because it's loud. You must have a my mechanical bad, bad. keyboard. <laughs> mechanical I do. keyboard in the house. I can hear it from Berlin. Um, so Dutchy, anything visual that has to do with be it the poster or the badges or the contr contribution button or the swirlies or anything, that's all you. So I just have to say thank you very much. You've put in countless hours and we really appreciate it. And how about this prize pool? Oh yeah, it's great. It's going up so fast. It's, it's ridiculous. Did you, did you expect this or? No, no, definitely not. Uh, like a couple of days ago, I, I told you, like, uh, maybe we should start and get this out there or we won't reach any goals, but, oh, man. You were worried, right? You were like, we got to launch. I did all this yeah, work. Yeah, come on, Ami, exactly. press the button. J Jan was the same way. Jan was like, come on, man, I've been coding this. Like, launch it already, you know? But I was yeah. like, come on, come on. Like, all the little things had to fall into place, you know? But that That's shows how, how dedicated the community is, right? Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, look at this list. I've got this list here on the stream. You know, I'll refresh it because it just keeps changing so quickly. And yeah, it's starting to go off my page. I can't fit everybody any anymore. I have to scroll down. So yeah, I mean, what is that? 20, 30, 35, 40 people, you know? And this is just, these are the diehards that spend their Saturday night, you know, like checking out Twitch and Code2.org. And so like, hopefully over the next weeks, uh, it's going to be sick. So, but Dutchie, that I've got you here, I mean, I I first noticed you because you took part in Von Klug's fan art contest for the December event. Is yeah, that right? yeah, right, in December, yes. I got um, second place, I believe, or third, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, and then Klug approached me if I wanted to become a member of staff, so I thought, what the hell, why not? So tell us a little bit about yourself, like where you're from and what your background is in design and so forth. Uh, well, my name is Tom. I'm from the Netherlands. I'm 26 years old, and um, currently I'm studying illustration design. Uh, at a university? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and art school. So you know, how much longer do you have before you get your degree? Uh, two years for my bachelor. Man, we caught, we caught him right at the right time, right, Ciaz? Like this amazing work. <laughs> we, exactly. we all noticed you so immediately. I, don't, I think the first thing that you posted was the image of me, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. That, that, uh, that got me uh, into the tournament, or at least got me second place, I believe. It said, Ami Polizei Funk, uh, not one step back. Or not one like step this. back, yes. Not one step back in blue with like a panther in the background, snow falling, and just the design was so yeah, cool. Yeah. Code2.org on it. As soon as I saw that, my eyes were like, oh my God. And, and now, you know, now it's, I hope, I never really asked you, but I'm using it on Twitter. It's my avatar. Like, I'm using that everywhere. I just think it's so cool. So, I have yeah, to that's fine. It's yours, man. You're personally like, personally, thank you. This is another one of those internet moments, folks. I've never talked to TM Dutchie before. 
This no, is the true. first time we've ever talked to each other. Yeah. We've done a lot of chatting. We've done a lot of back and forth thing as far as the, like, the art design stuff has gone like the past couple of months, like, creating this whole thing. A, a lot. lot of back and forth. Probably too I'm a bitch critic, aren't I? I you are hard to them. please. Yes, yeah. that's definitely true. <laughs> but it's all, all right. good. It's all good. I admit it. I admit it. I'm a bitch. I admit it. I'm very critical. Well, art is my field, so you know I have to. Express, oh, that's good. That, that's that's how you get opinion. quality out there, you know. So. But this that's is fun. the first time we've actually ever spoken together. So this is uh, this is a treat. Thanks for coming on the show. Um, so Thanks Holland. Uh, yeah. Are you near Amsterdam? I don't really know Holland geography. It's such a it's no, not not the largest really country. Moment. At the moment, I live, um, yeah, kind of in the middle. Okay. It's an this hour, kind of, uh, an hour, one and a half hours from Amsterdam. I would love to bike, like, from Berlin to Holland and around Amsterdam. Do you bike a lot? Because this is Holland's <laughs> Yeah, I do. Biking. Actually. Yeah? That, is that your primary mode of transportation? That's mine in Berlin. It's really oh, yeah, I can imagine. Convenient. Um, yeah, mostly in the train, because I don't study in the same town that I live, so I uh, travel by train a lot also, so... And so, t tell us just about the thought process of coming up with the poster. Let me just full screen it because it is so badass. Um, like when you were designing the poster, just talk, talk us a little bit through like what your or original ideas were and how it developed. Well, I think we kind of started off with uh, putting one of my planes in there, the the, the Focke Wolf. Yeah. And um, yeah, the no process. It's always hard to talk about the process. It's like stuff just comes up, and then you make sketches and um, put it put it on the on the website for review, and new stuff comes up. But I uh, thought it should should be something like classical with the with the, with the little swirlies and the and the gold like like yeah I don't know not not too modern. And yeah, it kind of all fit together. Got positive reaction, so I went with it. And then I guess the, the the hardest part was coming up with the name because uh, <laughs> yeah. Major Bloodnock and myself and you and Janne, we had like, I don't know, a three hour conversation on Skype scrolling through chat. Wikipedia pages yeah. and uh, chat. Oh That's yeah, right. exactly. Didn't we have were, a mic back then. It was. It was like three hours. And we, we yeah. looked at we looked at Wiki the Wikipedia I can't talk. The Wikipedia pages that detail all of the operations from World War II are so fascinating. Oh, and there are so many. There's so there's one called Operation Blackcock. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm exactly. not kidding. There oh, is. Man. There's an, yeah. a real World War II operation called Operation Blackcock. Yeah, I think Bloodnock really uh, wanted that one. Yeah, that's why I had to mention it. Was it was really passionate about it. There, Bloodlock's in the chat now. But anyway, the, but the names are just fascinating. There's so many great names. I mean, there's like hundreds of operations, and they're all organized by theater and by year. And so we were looking for inspiration there. And I think part of the reason that phone call took so long is because we were just kind of fascinated by all of it. And we were just yeah. checking out this and checking out that. And, and then we, we had like a couple of good ones, and then you found out, no, that's uh, the one where Hitler did that and that, so we can't use that. Uh, no, that's out. So inside, yes. And so eventually we settled on Charlie Fox because it has kind of a double meaning. Do you want to tell what it is or shall I? Uh, you do the honors, I mean. Okay, so o OCF, um, Operation Charlie Fox, we, we settled on um, Charlie and Fox are simply the British call signs that were used during World War II. So you have the entire alphabet. You know, and when people would call in, like, the number of, like, if something was CF1, they would do, like, Charlie Fox 1, Charlie Fox, repeat, you know, like, it, it's just call signs. It's a way to more clearly say a letter. Like, you wouldn't say C or D because they rhyme and it could be misunderstood on a radio, right? So you say Charlie and you say Fox because they sound totally different and they're easy to recognize. So there's a whole alphabet. And there are lots of these alphabets. There's like the U.S. call sign modern alphabet. There's the World War II version. There's the British version. And so Charlie and Fox are C and F from the British call sign World War II. And C and F, of course, the double meaning is crowdfunding. There it is. CS is like, oh. I, yeah, I just, I never realized that. That's so clever. I like it. So, and, and it sounds good, you know, Charlie Fox. It just it, it has a ring to it, so we settled on that. So that that was like the hardest part, right? And then and then once you yeah. had that, you were off and running, right, Dutchie? Yeah, yeah. And then it's Man. sketching, putting it up for review, Ami burning it down, sketching again. So. Oh come on, I'm not that harsh. No, 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 it's fine. So, wh what do you got for us next that we haven't seen yet? 
what I've got that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, I know you're working on stuff. You always are. Am I working little, on stuff? A little hint uh, of what might be coming. Flag, stretch goals, flagpole, or perhaps... Yeah, the flagpole saying... Overlay, I'm kind of the stream overlay, the signatures. UI. Yes, yes, stream overlay. Signatures for staff. The, probably I've the already got thing. mine. So, yeah, Dutchie's got his fingers in lots of pots. I've yeah, already there's got a lot my, of stuff in the pipeline. My Charlie Fox signature, and we're, we're thinking of doing a page where there's like a strap point flagpole, and the flag is raising as we reach the various stretch goals, you know? Like, just something so you can visually see the flag going up the pole. So we're, we're, we're thinking, of, are you, have you worked on that recently at all? Is that happening? That uh, a bit, but other things got in the way, so I haven't finished it yet, but it will be soon. And then also, Dutchy, man, our task has already been put in front of us. We already unlocked the splash screen set, so... Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, immediately. That was the oh, first thing. At 600, great. we unlocked that within, like, half an hour. And More so you and I have to go virtual reporter and go and start making these awesome images that we want to show during the intermissions. And you know what? Thinking about that when I was in the shower today, because that's what I do when I'm in the shower, I think about <laughs> KOTU. 2 I think I'm going to approach so Relic. And I'm gonna, I think I'm going to ask them if I can get in on some kind of developer Brit build or something, like just me, so I can go in there and take some awesome in-game screenshots of British units. Ooh, that would be awesome. Wouldn't that we be awesome? Yeah, we can definitely go do something it? for that. Yes, yes. What do you guys think in chat? Do you think Relic will give just me access, the war reporter, to go in there and just make some screenshots? Oh, well, I mean, if there's anyone who will get access, it would be you, probably. Well, we're promoting their game, right? How can they say no? It's like they like to control, you know, they've got the, they're doing their own thing. They've got their uh, social media. They're releasing, you know, like the single image of the sniper and then the Cromwell tanks. You know, those are those yeah. are really good looking. Yeah. But what we do is something totally different. Yeah. Uh, each each image that I like to take, I like to make sure that it's something that could have happened in a top game. You know, like I don't like to do anything that you wouldn't see in an actual SNF broadcast. Mm -hmm. That's why when I make these shots, you know, like, like there are these cheat tools where you can build the whole armies and place everything where you want. I, re I can't use those because I, 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 need to, I need it to be like DevM versus Aimstrong. Like, it needs to be right. them. Like, it the way they some, use some their units. Some history behind it. Exactly. And just yeah. the way they position their units, it has to be genuine. So on my screenshots, I like to – most of my stuff is just like unit portraits, so that's really easy. But when it's like a, a zoomed out sh action shot with tanks fighting or something, it's got to be something that could have happened. So it's always great games that make for great war reporting. Did you see the guy? I'm just shooting the shit now with you. Did you see the guy in the replay section who's like obsing games and taking screenshots and then posting them in the replay section? Oh, no, I haven't seen that. His name's like Black Corp or something like that. So he'll get like a game with like Quentin versus DevM and he'll take some screenshots while he's obsing it and then he'll post the screenshots in the thread. So he's oh, really cool. like a virtual war reporter. I think it's so cool. It is cool, yeah. I want to encourage people to do that kind of thing. So Ciaz, 24 hour stream if we reach a certain goal. Is this for reals? We're close, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Well, we so haven't I said did. it yet. We got yeah, to get you to something. Yeah, um, I promised my wife like a movie date already like a few days ago. So it couldn't be right after this. I'd have to do it. See, it's like 975. Play. Just now I just refresh written 975. It just jumped like 100 <laughs> bucks. So I think, did we say like $1,100 by the end of this stream? And uh, I'll, I'll do the 24 hours tonight. And then also on that stream, I'd want to obviously advertise this tournament and have people donate to this still. You're willing to stream for 24 hours. Yeah, and I actually, I don't think I've stood up for 24 hours since like college. And I'm, I'm Let's make a little bit old. So 1100 $1, Let's make it 1200 right. It's your price, your price. I'm offering that Dude, up and then you get to set the uh, you set the goal. I, I actually okay. kind of don't want us to make it because I don't want to put you through that. Uh, I, I'd be good. Um, I would just have to like sleep instantly on Sunday so I could wake up for work on Monday. But... 11.50. 11.50? All right. We, we 11 can do 11.50. All right. So virtual handshake, reach down and pretend you're shaking my hand. Reach down under the screen. So we're shaking. So if we reach... $1,150 prize pool by the end of this stream, which will be in about an hour, because we're going to cast a game. Then Ciez will do a 24-hour Twitch broadcast. And then we will see some good and progressively worse 1v1 action as the hours go by, right? 
<laughs> by the end, <laughs> I can't promise how uh, late hey, can be at the end. People but. in chat are into it, man. A lot of people are are mentioning. <laughs> Ivan said he just donated two thousand dollars. Wait, who? What? what? Yeah, uh, I don't think you're serious. Sure he but... did. Yeah, yeah, sure he did. Um, so Dutchie, any uh, shout outs you want to give? I all I can say to you is just like I'm. I'm just saying like thank you. Your art is fucking awesome. That's oh thank that's, you man. That's the just key thing. I, but you already know I feel that way about you. So that's no news to you, I think. I would like to give a shout out to the whole community because it's such an awesome community. It made me feel very welcome and um, well. You can see right now how how dedicated they are. And um, yeah, keep contributing, guys. Will be awesome. Will be a good tournament. Sturm Tiger Gaddafi did not like. Oh, and Wolf, both Wolf and Sturm Tiger Gaddafi no longer have uh, the second Benefactor badge. They wanted to be in the top badge group, and so Wolf must have given like an extra hundred bucks, that, that, or more, 150 maybe. Oh yeah, rocking the leaves. Because uh, Wolf had, al had pledged that he would give 250 total, and I think he just fulfilled his pledge because now he has the, the laurel leaves. And so... Sturm Tiger, Gaddafi, and Wolf have just joined Dr. Vox in the, the top badge. Great stuff. Thank you very much, guys. I'm sure those two alone are, are primarily responsible for bumping our prize pool to almost four digits. I just have to keep refreshing. Let me refresh again. We're at 975. We're going to be over a grand very soon, I have a feeling. All right. Still, still 975. Okay. All right. Cool. So just props to the community. All right. How about how about playing Co2 Dutchy? Do you play a lot? What what what's your favorite mode? I play mostly two v twos with a, a set teammate, a friend of mine. <laughs> one v one. That's is, what I did at the beginning. Totally. Co1. Uh, I only play two v twos. It's too much pressure for me. One v one. I enjoy it more as a as a team game, to be honest. But I love watching the one v ones. It's great. Yeah, that's very similar to my perspective. Um, when I started, actually, the composer Linsky, who wrote a lot of this music. He and I would play 2v2s on, like, Vire River Valley and Lorraine, and we had all the opening strats locked down. Um, Mont Therme was a, was a map that was removed shortly after. Oh, no, that was a 3v3 one. Let's see. What was the city one? Saint, Saint something. Anyway, great times playing, um, playing on those maps. That was, like, eight years ago. <laughs> Same, yeah, 2006? Yeah, the first yeah, game came out. Yeah. Yeah. September. But then I actually I didn't even I didn't even play online. I only comp stomped and did single player. <laughs> yeah, that's how a lot of people start out. That's definitely how a lot of people start. I think I'm gonna get back into playing too. I need to I need to get some sucker like Ciaz to carry me. That's what I need. Nice. See. I'll always play with you, Ami. If, uh, yeah. The problem is our time zones, right? Because you're in Germany and then I'm in uh, evening on the U.S. time. That's true. So weekends are best for us when it's evening for me and morning for you. But yeah, um, sure. Yeah, I like. L luckily, I have a lot of really good friends, so I just ping them and and they carry me uh, through team games, and then I can pretend that I'm decent because <laughs> I get wins, but I'm totally not. But anyway, all right. Well, Dutchie, thanks for coming on, albeit brief. And um, yeah, look, thanks for having me. We look forward to more stuff from you. I think this is gonna be dope. I don't know if we've unlocked the poster yet, but you and I are gonna have to do something, some special collaboration. Uh, we'll get there. Looks like we'll get there. We will get there. Dutchie and I guarantee that we will bring you good-looking stuff for this tournament. Yes, we will. All right. Thank you, Dutchie. Thanks for popping in. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me, Ami. Going to hang up with that call, and we're going to go cast a game. We'll see you on the forums. Dutchie, the man, artist extraordinaire. All right. He's off. So uh, let's see. I